Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you and I almost forgot what I had to say then. But anyway, uh, back with another uh, video for you. So today we're going to be taking a look at the 3930K, which is kind of where the hex cores start in the 2011 uh, range of processors. Um, and it, uh, it's not kind of, it is. This is the cheapest hex core that you can get on the 2011 socket. Comes in around the kind of £500 mark compared with sort of upwards of £800 or from £800 for the 3960X. And the only real difference when you look at the spec sheet is 3 meg less cash. So is it worth paying effectively £100 per extra meg of cash to get the 3960X? Well hopefully today we'll have a look at some benchmarks uh, and then um, maybe do a little bit of gameplay and then right at the very end We'll uh, get things wrapped up and then work on a conclusion and see what we think. Uh, but for now, it's time for us to move straight in uh, with some benchmarks and we'll start with some 3D Mark runs. Right then, peeps, on to the first of the 3D Mark uh, runs. On the left, we have a stock 3930K. On the right, we have a stock 3960X. Now, as you can see, the scores are very, very close. We've just, uh, I mean, what was that? 21 points between them. So we've got 5,972 for the 30, and then 5,993, without kicking the tripod, for the 60. So immensely close results. But what we're going to do now is uh, move straight on and take a look at the uh, X scores. And I'm literally just going to do it in front of you on the screen now rather than cutting the camera off. Because I'm doing these with screenshots just because it's quicker and like I said I can show you them side by side rather than having to do the runs. Um, but for the X score, again, very very close, down to 11 points gap on this one. We've got 1866 for the 30 and then 1865 for the 60. It's very very close. But now this time I am actually going to stop the camera and I'm going to move on to uh, Vantage. Okay then peeps, on to 3D Mark Vantage. Again on the left we've got the 30 which scores 24,861. And then on the right we've got the 60 which is 24,968. So yet again very like, immensely close scores there. But uh, I'm going to stop the camera quickly and we'll move swiftly on to an X score. Okie dokie, Vantage X, 11,640 for the 3930K and then 11,619 for the 3960X. So quite strangely, the um, 30 actually pulled in front there and we did run it a couple of times just to make sure and it was... For some reason with that run, with though, you know, with this config and everything, it just manages to pull in front. So we don't know why it, uh, Vantage slightly favours it on this one, but it did nonetheless. Um, but now what we're going to do, I've done these benchmarks, I think it's time we're going to do some W Prime and some Cinebench runs. Right peeps, PC Mark 7, so this is kind of uh, like a showcase of the entire system rather than just like graphics based stuff. We've got a score of 3540 for the 3930K and then on the right you can see the screenshot and that's the 3604 and that's for the 3960X. So still quite a minimal improvement there if we're going to be honest about it. Uh, considering the, it's only really the cash difference, um, but there's obviously a massive difference in price. So yeah, not really a massive amount in it in all honesty. Uh, what we're going to do now is um, do some more benchmarking. Right then peeps, on to uh, Cinebench. So, uh, on the left is the 30, which we got uh, with a stock score on the CPU of exactly 11 points. On the right is the 60, uh, with obviously, again, a stock CPU, and it was 11.36 points. So, you get, do you know what I mean? You get in kind of a third of a point there, just from that little extra bit of cash. Um, 
but there's still again not a massive amount in it when we can when you like I said you consider we're going stock versus stock with these um so yeah but then again not being funny uh the, an 11 point stock CPU score is enormous absolutely enormous um so what we're going to do now is going to break off again quickly and we will do uh some W prime results Okay then peeps, some uh, W prime scores, slightly enlarged, so that not only you can see it, but so that I can see it too. Um, on the left, the 30, we had a 32 million score of 5.553 seconds versus a 32 million score on the 60 of 5.492 seconds. So only a small amount in it there again. Uh, on the 124 million, we had a um, 152.132 seconds for uh, the 30, and then a 148.404 for the 60. So uh, you can see a bit of a gap opening up there on the 124 million. I mean, a four second gap is a fair old yomp there. So again, that is where you can see the, the cash really comes into use. Um, but really, uh, now, uh, I suppose we should uh, try some uh, games, to be perfectly honest with you, shouldn't we? What do you reckon? What do you think? Right then, peeps, just in case those of you out there skipped uh, at the beginning or weren't listening, uh, we're using a stock 570, uh, GTX 570, in with a 3930K, uh, stock CPU, stock graphics card. The reason why we're using a 570 is because uh, in our Sandy Bridge reviews and in a lot of the reviews we did on 1366, we use the uh, 570 then, and it's just so that the uh, results are comparable. Uh, maybe changing the graphics card at a later date, but for the time being, we're still using this. So that just gives you a rough idea on what's going on. Battlefield 3 in front of you, completely maxed out uh, on 1920 by 1080. Obviously, the top left-hand top of the screen is showing the graphics card, um, but that's uh, an afterburner readout, the on-screen display. This is more just to show you uh, what gameplay is like really because it's kind of difficult with uh, like the graphics and stuff but it's it's just to kind of show you what's going on but again this is a stock CPU but then again there's, yeah, with a CPU like this the word bottleneck really isn't going to be used and I hate that word anyway cause it's so overly used nowadays it's unbelievable uh, but yeah just a bit of Battlefield 3 we're on to the air section um, Storbs is playing it at the moment. There's really, to be perfectly honest, like I said, where it's a CPU review, there's not really a massive amount we can show you for this. But it's just so that we have got a bit of gameplay in there for you to have a look at. Right then, peeps. Onto a bit of Metro, obviously the same level we always do. It's one of the few times that you'll actually see the uh, 570 really getting beasted graphics wise because it's a massively demanding game. But again, it's just a way for us to um, just show you what is capable with the uh, the system. Although I can't, kind of would have exp I would expect that someone with a three nine thirty K might have a better graphics card than this, but it's not necessarily um, true because you might not you might be using it as like a uh, workstation system or something like that.
<laughs> and he still appeared. Anyways, peeps, that's enough for uh, um, Metro. Has to be time now for a conclusion. Right then, peeps, time for the conclusion. And this one is pretty clear cut, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, in, and by clear cut, I mean there's really not a lot I can say about it other than Gold Award. Uh, to be perfectly, perfectly honest with you, if this was my money now and I had the choice of the 3930K and the 3960X, there would be no way in my, in my right mind I would buy the 60. You're better off getting the 30. Uh, and why do I say that? It's because in pretty much every way, they're almost identical. It's just almost not worth spending that bit of extra money. This is almost like the days of the 970 versus the 980 again. I know things were slightly different back there and it was all to do with base clock and multipliers and stuff like that, but obviously things have changed slightly with the 2011s. But the 3930K is awesome. It is slightly behind, ever so slightly, in, in the results. So that's obviously the cash. Uh, in the review that I did on Overclock 3D, uh, I didn't find that the uh, the base clock necessarily liked going uh, as high as the uh, 3960X. So basically, with the 3960X results, it was at 125 base clock. With the 3930K results, we kept it at a we kept it at 100 base clock and just put the uh, multiplier up a little bit more. Uh, so there wasn't a massive amount in it. So it's really just the core speed difference. Um, but in all sense and purposes, this would be the 2011 processor, if you wanted a hex core, that you should be buying because it's absolutely blinding. And I mean absolutely blinding. It's just, it's, it's so good, it makes you wonder why the 3960X costs that much more. I mean, if you were, if you were given a processor, it wouldn't really make a lot of difference. But if you had to find an extra 300 quid, which let's face it, it's like two thirds extra price on the top of 3930K, looking at the benchmarks results, it's just like, I couldn't really see the point in it. When it's overclocked, obviously because of the extra bit of bus on the 3960X, the 3960X was a bit in front, but not by a great deal. Um, so uh, this would be my 2011 processor of choice. I think the 3930K is an absolute blinder, and I mean absolutely wicked. It's one of the reasons why um, Haley, when we built her 600T rig recently, that's why she went with the 3930K. Um, and I really, really do like this rig to the point where I may start using the 3930K uh, in uh, like bench rigs and stuff in the future rather than the 3960X. Because, um, I, I, although I have got the 3960s here, obviously, it's just from a, you know, from a, a lot of people kind of moan at me a lot recently because I use all the best kit, but it's because if you get sent the kit, why not use it? Why would I want to use a 2500K when I can use a 3960X? You know I mean, I'm an enthusiast just as much as you guys are. Um, and it's really, the way I look at it is I'll show you what's possible with this kit not necessarily you know trying to mimic your rigs at home which is why people get uh, funny with me it's well I've got 2500k why do I care what uh, 3930k does well uh, you wouldn't be watching the reviews otherwise and it like I said it's to show you what's possible you can always compare it with all the other reviews and stuff like that but we're going massively off topic and Straubs is sat here going why, the fuck, why are you talking about you anyway uh, 3930k is an absolute monster and I do mean an absolute monster this is one of the ones where one of the few reviews where I'm sat here thinking a gold award wasn't good enough because the 3960x definitely deserved the gold award but because of the price and the performance of 3930k this really deserved more uh, and that's I think that should say it enough for you guys um, so if you're looking to build a 2011 rig you, you want some uh, real proper, do you know what I mean, CPU grunt. So you're going to be doing renders for lots of Photoshop, video editing, stuff like that. Or you're just building an absolute monster gaming rig. We're going to have a pair of 7970s or a pair of 580s in there. There is no second thought in my mind. For me, you should be getting the 3930K. Really wouldn't bother. 
you know, spending any more money, you know, going on from that. Still overclocks just as well. Um, I'm seeing uh, around 1.4 volts, pretty much every single processor that I've got is hitting the, the kind of taps about 4.6, 4.8 gigahertz. And that just seems to be a, a kind of a limit with the, the 2011 processors. I mean, the thing is, there's a lot of you out there going to be thinking only 4.6. Don't forget these things are absolute powerhouses. Don't just fixate yourself on the core speed. Please don't, because the difference between this at 4.6 and a 990X at 4.6 are leagues ahead. It's just a, a completely different processor. If you had a 2700K at 4.6 and one of these at 4.6, it pretty much is 50% quicker, because obviously you've got those extra cores. So it's an absolute you know complete monster um so like i said please do keep that in the old uh, brain banks they can get a little bit warm because obviously you've got uh six cores in there going absolutely nuts um but with a decent air cooler or something like the h100 nocturne hd14 you can keep at 1.4 volts things pretty much uh around the kind of 70 mark which really isn't too much of a problem um, and don't forget it's the V core again that uh, creates the heat not so much the actual uh, frequency that the, the, the process is running at. So I do get, seem to get a lot of questions where people saying, oh yeah well, how hot is my CPU going to be at 4.5 volt, 4.5 gigahertz? Well how the bloody hell do I know when A I don't know what cooler you're using, B most importantly I don't know how many volts you're putting through it. Um, Again, just kind of like little noob statements. I'm on a bit of a rant today. I really should have not had so much coffee. But I'm going to try and tie this up here. 3930K, absolute blinder. Absolute blinder. Probably the best 2011 processor available on the market at the moment. No, not probably. The best 2011 processor available on the market at the moment. And by that, I mean for a mixture of price and performance, absolutely bang on, spot on. Um, so, yes... Even I'm starting to laugh at myself now, so I am going to stop the video here and say this is Tiny Tom Logan with the gold award winning Intel i7-3930K. Out. <laughs>